Y'all ready to be history? Get started. Welcome. Hi. 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 Hello, everyone. To the Pro Audio Suite. These guys are professional. They're motivated. Thanks to Tribooth, the best vocal booth for home or on the road voice recording. And Austrian Audio, making passion heard. Introducing Robert Marshall from Source Elements and Someone Audio Post, Chicago. Darren Robert Robertson from Voodoo Radio Imaging, Sydney. Tech to the VO Stars, George the Tech Whitam from LA. And me, Andrew Peters, voiceover talent and home studio guy. Line up, lady! Here we go. And don't forget the code TRIPAP200. That will get you $200 off your tri booth. And of course, Austrian Audio, making passion heard. An email came via our union here in Australia, the MEAA, uh, talking about voiceover auditions. And they want talent to do auditions only on a phone. <laughs> you can kind of see why they're thinking of that, but the, the issue I've got is that um, phones aren't that bad. <laughs> There's too many roadcasters in this conversation. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. We, gotta, we gotta move away from the default banker chunk. Uh-huh. So what? So what <laughs> is the reason, Andrew? Did they did they say is it because they think that the crappy quality is gonna? Well, the supposed crappy quality would be my opinion. Is correct. going to uh, make people think twice about just using it? That is correct. It's going to be MP3 from your telephone. Purposely uh, made bad. But is it really? Correct. I mean, we've talked about this on the show before. I mean, the iPhone in a micro sorry, the, the microphone in an iPhone is spectacularly good. So what's the point? Or is it, or is it more that the consumer doesn't care anyways? Meant to be an equalizer, so everybody sounds equally m- mediocre. <laughs> the meekalizer. The meekalizer. Is, is that the meek-alizer. Joe? The Joe Meek <laughs> mediocre. Yeah. The meekalizer will inherit the voiceover industry. Or you yeah. were saying you're saying so that they purposely don't use the audition for the job. Correct. Yeah, it's like protection. I guess that makes sense. I mean, I know in the states, people love it when they get their auditions lifted and they don't have to re- record it again. Yeah, it happens true. all the time. Yeah. Yep. But or, or you record them anyways, and you still use the audition. Oh, that happens yes, too? Yes, yeah. yeah. So that's fascinating. So did you get a direct answer as to why, or is it just a mandate, don't ask questions? It kind of came via my agent who's forwarded it from the, the um, union. There's yeah. also a disclaimer form as well to protect you. Um, so that you have to read a disclaimer on your audition saying that my voice cannot be used for AI and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So I, it's all about AI, but it's kind of like a, the more I thought about the iPhone thing, particularly iPhone and an iPhone 15, you can get away with using that actually for broadcast, really. Yeah. If it's done correctly, yeah. If you record in a quiet, well-tuned environment, you're going to have a very good sounding iPhone recording. Yeah. A well-placed yeah. iPhone will sound better than a poorly placed U87. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. There you go. Well, so maybe that maybe the directive should have been stand on your local street corner and record on your phone. <laughs> Maybe that should have been. Or, or, or just ask Robert. Yeah. How to, yeah. 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 To yeah. Robert's just listen to the Pro Audio Suite. Any episode, just check out Robert and you'll get a good idea of what to do. Right. No, you should run the Hoover or the vacuum cleaner while you're doing your audition. Yeah. 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 Or you could record in my place, you know, kids screaming, toilets flushing, you know, all the fun stuff. There you go. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Or toilets screaming and yes, in kids flushing. flushing. Yes, exactly. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. fascinating to me. So, what medium are you recording with? Just to the voice memo app on your phone? I'm assuming so. I've, I used the phone once to muck around with when I bought a a Rode microphone that plugged into your phone. Right. Um, and I think I used GarageBand from memory. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I, I never record on the phone anyway. But if this is the new directive, I I don't really know whether it's going to achieve much because. All right, so someone's not going to use it for the the real job, so you're not going to get it stolen. They can still use it for AI because if you're training a robot, then doesn't matter what it sounds like. Really, still good enough to train an AI an AI bot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then again, the other thing is, of course, if you send in an audition that sounds like shit, you, you don't want the person at the other end to go, "Oh God, their studio is awful. I won't be using them." Well, this is the thing: are they going to be told that you're auditioning on your phone, or are they just going to get your audition expecting that you're going to be in your booth in your home? Well, I don't know. And the other thing is, of course, it's a directive here. But I mean, what if I'm auditioning for another country? 
why don't they just take all the auditions and run it through a plugin that makes it sound like crap? Well, you could do that as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, just, yeah. Yeah. Just make it, just give it a 4K low pass. And be done with it. Yeah. So just real sounds yeah. like a telephone. Yeah. Yep. I mean, okay. Really how about easy. this? Okay. I got it. Ready? When they post it, they just put a little watermarker in there that goes, voice jungle. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember, I this is probably a long, long, long time ago, but there was a point at one, one stage they were worried about records being bootlegged and they used to put something, there was some kind of weird frequency when you tried to record dub something across, it would have this weird frequency through it. Oh, really? Yeah, I think I think on tapes, yeah, they tried, it was. They it tried was to cassettes. do something that would mess with the bias of a tape. The bias so you tone. Couldn't, uh. You couldn't make a dub of it. And then later in CDs, you found that with the, um, remind me of the code, Spitif had the uh, SRC, there was a setting when you'd master a CD it would only allow one digital generation to be made, and the second di- digital generation could not be copied. SRC right. or something. Yeah, what was that called? Yeah, I don't remember, but yeah, I that, know what that, you're talking <laughs> about. Yeah, it's a sample, sample bit. The like, like, like people would call it sample bit. I think. Yeah, when you master a CD, you can actually enable a bit that will prevent that disc from being copied. Mm. Yeah, I, I remember that in my recording in like Wave Lab or whatever I was using to master. Yeah. Or yep. burn the master. You could say, "Do not make this disc copyable." And then, and then, if you had a professional DAT machine, it wouldn't give a crap, and it would copy it anyways. Yeah, was that um, <laughs> connected via AES or via SPDIF? SPDIF or AES would, I, I believe, well, definitely SPDIF. No, 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 SPDIF because SPDIF carried more metadata than AES. I believe. I don't know that if it was carried over AES. I'm not sure. SPDIF was the consumer protocol, and AES was the pro. Correct. Protocol. Um, and then there was another change to it, because then after that, when recordable CDs came out, the music industry wanted its royalties for all the music that was going to get bootlegged. So they made special, more expensive recordable CDs. So that then when you bought a consumer CD recorder, you had to buy these more expensive CDs. Like Philips came out with the 870, and it was a cheap CD recorder. But it could only use these expensive discs. But then everyone figured out that all you had to do was... You had bought one expensive disc and you put it in the machine and you primed it for record and then you waited and you just grabbed your fingernails underneath the CD tray and you pulled it out and you switched the disc with a cheap disc and you pushed it in without like triggering the close motor so it didn't know to start its cycle up again. Wow, that's a hack oh, and a half. God. And, then, and then you could just record on cheap discs and you didn't have to have an expensive uh, recorder. Like, you know, because if not, you were buying like an HHP or like a thousand dollar cd recorder instead mm. of a three hundred dollar wow wow well there you go wow i wish i had known that hack all those years ago but there you go and then the other thing that you don't remember on the cd was the pre-emphasis bit that would yeah. raise the high end right that's what pre-emphasis did it raised the high end a little bit extra yeah i don't remember why wow. but i do remember that it had that to compensate for shitty playback systems i guess i don't know because like there's the RIA eq curve on phonographs it was almost like that, yeah. It's like but a that was pre-emphasis, much de-emphasis, yeah. Mm. Scums, that's what they called it, SCMS, Serial Copy Management System. Yeah, They would call it scum because they hated it. <laughs> it was annoying. <laughs> well, I mean, based on that, scum, why don't they do it? Why don't we have a scum in our DAW so we just hit that when we record so it sounds great but no one Send can it out it. on CD. Oh, Send your people demo people are talking CD. about things like this, like trying to find a way to be able to track the media from even where it all goes. So for instance, if you have a sound effects library, the sound effects can be seen inside of the mix that they are. And then somehow the person gets royalties. It's, I don't know, it's a pretty hard problem to solve. It seems like there's a thousand ways to get around it and only one way to make sure it works right. This phone thing, going back to that just for a second, because it's just occurred to me, does it does it sort of smack of desperation to you that this sort of clutching at straws of sort of like, well, you know, this is the best we can do. Does, does it feel to you like it does to me that maybe they're just getting desperate with this whole thing? To me, it smacks of, I didn't know there was that big of a problem with pilfering auditions that this is necessary. Yeah, I'm shocked. I mean, I would never have thought of this as a solution, but I would have thought of another way to do it. But this is a super, it's a thing that anybody can do because everybody has a smartphone at this point. And 
It doesn't fix the fidelity problem necessarily because you can really you can still record really great sounding files. I mean, yeah. Even more so, you can now upres stuff. I'm sure this is going to hit for audio, but someone brought me a SD. It was DVD, but it might as well have been a VHS. It just looked like shit compared to all the video that we're used to, right? And took it to AI, and it made it look like proper HD. It just interpolated everything, all the missing bits. It's just like, I know it would have been here. Here's the nose hair. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I suppose I, mean, I suppose you sort of got to be, these sort of unions and stuff have to be seen to be doing something, but I don't know that they're really doing anything. I can't see it making any difference. I mean, you've just got to be really, really careful about who you audition for. They've just got to be trustworthy and they've got to be a signatory of a union so they don't break the law, otherwise they use, lose their um, membership to the union. Uh, I mean, I can't think of any other way of doing it. There's got to be some kind of way of punishing, but if someone wants to do it, they'll do it anyway. Yeah. You know? Is it, the, is it the, that there's too many desperate voice actors just desperate to find any kind of work and they just don't care? They just want to get any opportunity to work? So they set themselves up to be ripped off? And then, next, yes. yeah, next thing you know, they take a gig where they're just like reading the dictionary and all of a sudden their voice is cloned or it's part of a clone that you don't know what it's in. And they've just been part of a, because this is like a big data war is really what it boils down to. And, and how do you protect your data when your data is just like coming off of you like light? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you can't. Well, I mean, when you think about how many auditions people do every day, you know, how much, how much sort of unused voiceover is actually floating around out there? There must be crap loads of it. So much. Well, did I, did I tell you what we want to do with the Echo servers? Like, and I, we don't really want to do this, by the way, so don't want to worry. But we just thought it'd be funny if we ever just, like, took a recording of all of the junk that gets set into Echo. <laughs> like the, oh, the Echo yeah, collage. I can imagine what people hello, would be hello, doing check. in there. Yeah. <laughs> This fucking piece of shit. <laughs> bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why does my mic sound like shit? What's going on? Yeah, yeah. All that rubbish. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That'd be hilarious. Yeah. You could do a rap yeah, song out of it or funny. something. You know, just sample oh, yeah. stuff. There's, there's like a lot of material there. Just Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The the source elements, yeah, the source elements 12 inch or something. Echo, yeah. echo roulette. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Echo roulette. Yeah, yeah. Echo you could have fun with that. You could actually tell people, you know, you could you could sort of have a competition. The person who leaves us the best line for our remix wins a 12-month subscription go. to Nexus or something. There you go. That, that, that would be a really fun one. I mean, right now it's like we don't run the queue manager because it would just fill up in an hour and then the computer would explode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Interesting. It's a lot. There you go. It's I funny, know. isn't it? I mean, AP and I were talking about subjects we were going to talk about today and, and I was flicking back through our catalogue of, of shows just looking for ideas. And it goes back as far as like 2020 we were talking about AI back then. It's just, it's been an overriding sort of shadow over the industry for so long, hasn't but it? But in the just, last two years it has gotten... It's gotten worse, but I mean, yeah, but you, but you can go back to 2020 and we were talking about it then. It's just been this big black cloud hanging over the industry for so long, hasn't it? It's just weird. Don't worry, there won't be any industry anymore, so it's, it's all Well, <laughs> God. Oh, that's really sure. sure. It's crazy, isn't it? You, you know? I've been delved, thanks to George's influence, I've been delving into AI a little bit. And man, some of the stuff, you know, just images even, you know, conjure me up this image and bang, there it is. You know, it's just crazy. Thing is, I recognize all those images that you post as being AI generated. I'm sure. I'm it's, sure you it do. It has a very distinct style. It's very... It's a signature to it. It's like it's. I, it's just an, we. If we. If you know, you know. I guess is what I'm saying. Most people could care less, but yeah. Yeah, it's a slippery slope that we're sliding on down into the depths of God knows where. No work. Yeah, exactly. Of the slurp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, who knows? Yeah. Splash. Well, that was fun. Is it over? The Pro Audio Suite, with thanks to Tribooth, and Austrian Audio, recorded using Source Connect, edited by Andrew Peters, and mixed by Voodoo Radio Imaging, with tech support from George the Tech Whittem. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and join in the conversation on our Facebook group. To leave a comment, suggest a topic, or just say good day, drop us a note at our website, theproaudiosuite.com.